everyone, and welcome back to the Redbeard Outdoors podcast. I'm Jonathan, your host, and here at Redbeard Outdoors, we talk about faith, family, fitness, and the outdoors. Guys, I want to make it very clear that I am just sharing my journey with you. I'm very new to archery, very new to gear testing, not really an expert in many things at all, but I love talking to people and I want to share those conversations with you on Saturday. And then on Tuesdays, like today, I get to share Tinkering Tuesdays because I like to tinker with gear. Um, I have made relationships with some amazing companies that I uh, just get to mess around with stuff and share that with you so that you know where to spend your hard earned money or if you maybe should hold off from spending your money on certain items. So, with that being said, guys, today I bring to you my broadhead choice of 2023. Uh, this is something that has a lot to do with the way that things fly, uh, the cutting surfaces, etc. There's so many things that go into broadheads, guys, but I want to share with you a couple that I've chosen, actually, uh, chosen, actually, if I can English today. Uh, I'm actually going to be shooting a couple different ones based on the scenario, but they all fly very similarly. And I'm very happy about that because obviously you want your broadheads to hit where you're aiming. Uh, and for that reason... I'm really excited to bring to you the couple that I'm going to be using this year. Uh, so first and foremost, let's go with the fixed broadheads that I've chosen. I've gone through multiple and just kind of I've shot some in the past that I really like. Nothing against those, but I want to try something new this year. And my hunts this year are really I've got over the counter elk here in Utah. I'm going to Colorado on an over the counter elk tag. And of course, I can do some whitetail in the fall. There might be some other things rolling out, possibly, we'll see. Uh, but those are the ways that I'm going to be rolling this year as far as hunting goes. Guys, I've got a 9 to 5 as well. I don't get to do this for a living, so I'm going to soak up every single moment that I can. And while I'm at it, I'm going to test some of these gear items and see maybe am I going to stick with something permanently moving forward or kind of mess around. I know there's a hot topic of mechanicals versus fixed. Uh, guys, I see the benefit of both to be honest with you. There's some reasons why you'd want to shoot a fixed broadhead. There's other ones where mechanicals, I feel like, would come into play a lot better. And I'm going to test both out this year. So let's talk about the fixed broadheads that I've chosen this year, why I've chosen those broadheads, and why you should look into them as well. So of course, we're going to start off first with my fixed broadhead that I'm going to be shooting for elk this year. It's going to be the Iron Will Single Bevel 125 broadhead with the bleeders so the iron wheel single bevel 125 with bleeders guys uh i know bill personally he's such an amazing dude he's so smart uh way smarter than i can ever hope to be when it comes to things like uh aero flight and just engineering in general so i really trust these i love the way that they fly um they they're just amazing and the 125 single bevel, really excited to see what that does as far as a blood trail goes, because I know that a lot of people are concerned about blood trails with um, the two blade broadhead. And that's why I want the bleeders as well. But that single bevel, I'm hoping will cause a lot of internal damage uh, so that the elk will not run very far as long as I'm shooting properly and putting it where I want it to go. So as you know, with Iron Will, again, really high quality material. They're easy to sharpen, which I am terrible at sharpening. And so I have a buddy that has shown me how to do some sharpening. And uh, with the single bevel, it makes it a lot easier. And um, I really enjoy the way these broadheads fly, the way they look. Of course, they're clean, but the way they fly, they're super sharp, high quality material, just outstanding overall performance. So I'm excited to test those out in the field this year. The other fixed broadhead that I will be testing possibly on whitetails later this year is the Evolution 125. I always get these mixed up, guys. So there's a Jekyll and a Hyde. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde, so he does a mechanical and a fixed. This is the fixed. So it's basically a four blade, but they're offset. And I love that swept back angle of these blades right here. Super sharp outstanding 125 grain screw and broadheads guys i'm really stoked about those those uh they make me happy um great quality materials i know the guy that makes them himself 
Um, he is just an avid bow hunter. He absolutely loves what he does. And so those are the two fixed broadheads. They fly great. Uh, I don't think any broadheads really fly just like field points. So if someone's telling you that, I'd go check it out as far as fixed broadheads go. Uh, but they fly with my field points. They give me good groups where I want them to be. And um, I'm excited to see what happens with you know the single bevel, the damage that causes. And uh, this one here, the again, guys, I apologize. I get these mixed up. But either the Jekyll or Hyde, this fixed blade right here. Uh, is just, I mean, that looks devastating. So excited to test those out in the field and get you guys some honest feedback on those. I love uh, that these come in some great packaging. Of course, that always helps. It lets you know that they care about the quality of the product, but also, you know, somewhere you can store your broadheads. Uh, you don't have to go buy a broadhead box. So this is definitely the best packaging out of all the broadheads I've ever owned. It's just a hard case, not very bendable at all. It almost looks like a mini Pelican case. It's pretty sweet. And positive click there, etc. But anyway, there's the Iron Wheels and the Evolutions. Let's see here. Oh, I got the... Okay, perfect. Now let's talk mechanicals. And here's where I'm at with mechanicals. I don't know all of the science behind it, guys. I know that there are certain penetration factor when it comes to uh, your poundage, your draw length, your speed of your arrow, the weight of your arrow, all the force behind it. All I know is that with me shooting a, depending on the bow, it's either 28 or 28 and a half inch draw, 80 pounds, um, I'm good with mechanicals or fixed. And what I really like about mechanicals versus fixed is the even bigger hole and damage that it can cause. Because last year, as you know, um, I had an issue where I, amazing broadhead and nothing wrong with the broadhead. The broadhead did its job, went through the entire body cavity of the animal, but uh, with it coming in from such a steep angle and going out, it's basically going through lung, liver, and then the guts and coming out the right hind quarter. Uh, the guts plugged that exit hole and I wasn't able to follow a blood trail. So later I recovered the deer. And you can go back and listen to that episode. So I did recover the deer, did tag it, um, was not able to recover the meat, though. I found it like a week later or something like that. So that was something that for me, I said, well, I could see the benefit of a mechanical in that situation because it would open up more of a hole than the fixed blade did, which again, the fixed blade did its job, traveled right through. It was a clean pass through through the entire body cavity came out the other side and that was just uh, an error on my end. So with that being said, the two mechanicals that I'm excited to try out this year are the two inch severs. The, this one doesn't have the O ring on it because it's in practice mode. What I really like about the severs and you guys can watch my video that I've done on these, but you can put this pin right here and you can use it in practice mode. So. This thing is a beast. I mean, a two inch cut broadhead. What's awesome about these broadheads is that when these are deployed, the blades will actually tilt. So say it's going through and it hits bone, the blade will tilt instead of the whole broadhead being kicked off, the blade will tilt out of the way and it will continue its pass through, which a lot of people are concerned with rib cages, et cetera, with mechanicals. What I personally, and the way that I, again, guys, I am disclosing this as I am not a, an expert, uh, but people that I have talked with that know a lot more about archery than me have knocked down a lot more animals than I have say that when they shoot mechanicals, they make sure to stay away from the shoulder uh, just because they want to not have to punch through that bone. And guys, there's so much expansive like lungs and other good material to go through behind the shoulder that you can cause can cause good blood trails and for the animal to pass away quickly, uh, which is what we all want as ethical archers and hunters. So that's my goal with these two inchers. I'll be using these on whitetail for sure. And then the other mechanical that I will be using is the Evolution. Again, either the Jekyll or the Hyde, but the mechanical from Evolution. It's the 125 grains. 
So both the sever and this is 125. But these will be my follow-up shots. They'll be in my quiver. I'll have two of these in my quiver for follow-up shots, even with the fixed um, broadheads. Or for, uh, you know, the uh, grouse arrow. Um, that will be in my quiver because I want to be able to have that further shot in case I do have to have a follow-up shot and uh, want to create a little bit bigger hole so that the animal will pass away quicker. So those are the those are the four broadheads that I have chosen for this year um, that I will be running a conglomerate between them uh, with. And I do want to say with the mechanicals, it's always still good to practice, even though they claim, you know, most people claim that mechanicals fly like field points. It's still more surface area than a field point. Even this is much more surface area than a field point. So I love that you can have practice mode on this. So you can practice with your severs. And here is the practice point for the evolution heads. So those are the four broadheads that I'll be using in the different scenarios. Again, guys, I wish I could go out and have multiple other hunts that I can go on. Um, hopefully. We're able to, I will be buying a bear tag when I go up to Colorado for my elk. So hopefully I'm able to put a mechanical through a bear as well. And that's another reason why it'll be in my quiver when I'm out elk hunting. Uh, but those will be the four broadheads that I use, the reasons why I use them. What I want to know from you guys is out of those four, have you ever heard of them? Do you have any questions about these broadheads? What's your experience with these broadheads? Uh, I've noticed that Evolution Broadheads aren't as well known as uh, some of the other brands out there. And so when I was able to get my hands on these, I was really excited uh, to be able to test them out. Guys, I'm telling you, they fly amazing. And I mean, the angle that's going to be on these, and let's see if I can pull one of these out without damaging it too much. But look at that freaking, oh my goodness, that is going to be devastating. So you've got the cut on contact head, which is awesome. And man, that blade angle, that swept back blade is just going to be fantastic. So again, what questions do you guys have? Drop them in the comments down below. I'm excited to talk to you about these broadheads. I'm excited to test them out. If you liked this video, like, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to this on the audio only platform, I would really appreciate it if you would follow the show, subscribe to it, leave a review. It means way more then you know. And again, guys, if you have any questions about this, drop them down below. I'd love to hear about it. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Definitely go check out the, uh, the YouTube channel if you're listening on the audio only version and uh, subscribe over there as well so you can see these broadheads. And I'll give you guys a follow up after season. Hope you have an outstanding day. And of course, get out, live your life and love it.